Welcome and thank you so much for checking out our video. Please remember to like and subscribe. So today is going to be a little bit different. We're going to be taking a look at the Mavic Air 2 and its ActiveTrack 3.0 software. And we're going to see how the different follow me modes work on a solo dirt bike shoot. So this shot is in trace mode. It's following me along from behind and it seems to have a little bit of trouble right when I get up to this little mining area up here when I pass these little trees. See, right there it loses me. So when it loses tracking, it goes into return to home mode and heads back to where it started from. All of these shots were done with the drone remote switched to normal mode. When in normal mode, the drone is able to use its obstacle avoidance software. The downside to normal mode is the top tracking speed of the drone is just over 20 miles per hour. If you switch the drone to sport mode, it can track you at over 40 miles per hour, but you do run the risk of crashing into something at a high rate of speed due to the fact that the obstacle avoidance software is not available in sport mode. This was probably the best follow shot I got of the day, and as you can see, the drone is in trace mode following me from behind, and it is adjusting for altitude as I go up. I have to admit, I am a fan of some of the shots it takes, when it actually stays with me. It did a really good job tracking me around this corner and keeping cinematic framing. Right here you can see it dodges the trees just a little bit. Then it gets a little bit bouncy as it adjusts for altitude, but I suppose it is avoiding obstacles. So quick drone check and wow, it's right on my tail. I can't believe it's still following me. I start my turnaround, I watch it, it's tracking me. I think we're all good. Head off back down the trail takes off with me. It's doing great. And then it's near that tree and just stops. Which is strange because I had the obstacle avoidance software on and it's supposed to go around things. So this next shot I'm in parallel mode and it's following me along. Um, I don't really understand parallel mode because it just follows you from behind. It doesn't really follow you from the side. It, you can't get it to follow you from the front at all, which is kind of disappointing. One thing I do like about this drone is the video looks incredible and it's very smooth. The gimbal works great. Now here I am approaching this mine again and uh, let's see how the drone reacts when I get close to these little bushes. Once again, it loses its tracking in just about the same spot. I'm not sure why. Another thing I don't like is that I have to set the remote down wherever I start. I wish there was a way I could lock the remote so I could stick it in my backpack while doing follow shots without messing up the controls. When the drone loses tracking, I have to head all the way back to where I started in order to get the remote and regain control. It's not as if the drone is out of control as it is just going to return to the home point that was set, but it is quite an inconvenience. So as you can see in this scene, I've just highlighted myself on the touch screen and not yet set a tracking mode. So what the drone is doing is it's just hovering in place and following me around. You'll notice the shot's a little bit jerky as I go directly underneath the drone, but otherwise the follow is pretty smooth. So here's another shot in parallel mode, which once again I don't understand because the meaning of parallel means it would be going along the side. 
but let's watch the active track software adjust for the altitude. As I'm going uphill, it keeps adjusting and raising up as well. So far it looks good, it's working pretty well. Shot's not bad, the tracking is smooth. But then something happens. I feel like it's getting a little too close to the ground here and it just stops, which is strange because it should be able to adjust for the altitude and keep following me. So on this shot, I put the drone directly above me and pointed the camera straight down and stuck it in trace mode and started with that. Uh, I wanted to see how that shot would work out and uh, if that follow me mode would work better. As you can see, I'm still going a little wide around the trees because I'm not fully confident in the obstacle avoidance capabilities. So here I pick up some speed and you can see that it is adjusting a little bit for lens angle as I get a little further away. It would be a lot better if it would just stay in the direct overhead position that I started out in. It gets a little bouncy as it adjusts its altitude. And as I stop, it returns to the directly overhead position. Maybe the software will get an update so it can stay in the same position the whole time. In this shot, I stuck active track into trace mode and positioned the drone directly in front of me to try to get a different angle. It works for a little while, but then slowly goes off to the side and then, of course, it just always returns to that rear position. And as it returns to its default position in the back, you can see the camera gets a little bit jerky. Uh, some of these shots are quite cinematic, but the camera does get a little bit jerky. It's going up and down with altitude, and uh, as you can see, we're coming up to the mine again. Let's see how it reacts. It seems like the tracking has gotten a little wobbly in this section. It's still following. Coming up on the mine. So it doesn't like this area. I'm curious if it has something to do with the contrast between me and the background. So Active Track 3.0, it's got a lot of potential and I think it could eventually get there, but right now I don't find it dependable and it makes it really hard to do a solo dirt bike shoot. I think I just prefer to uh, operate and shoot someone else at this point. Thank you so much for checking out our video. Please remember to like and subscribe and you will be notified when we release more episodes of Colorado Dirt Bike Adventures.